When I first got into music, my parents played a huge role in deciding what instrument I'd pick up and play for the rest of my life. Too much feedback. My ears ringing. I was talking to my dad a couple years ago and I was like, you know, drums could be cool. And he's like, yeah, that's valid. Guitar, he's like, yeah, definitely. Vocals. And I was like, you know, maybe I could play bass guitar. And my dad says, no, you don't want to do that. Because bass guitar is for nerds. So a couple of years ago at my favorite guitar store, there was a nice white bass guitar there. And naturally as a six string guitar player, I pick up the bass guitar and I start going like this. There's something about dropping an octave and just holding those juicy walking bass lines that really makes my big toe stick up in my boot, if you will. So about a year later, I buy the bass, and that's what I have here today. It's a GNL Kiloton, the same company that Leo Fender created after he decided to leave Fender Incorporated. Now, one thing that I'm curious about is metal bass lines, because with metal music, there's so much guitar, and there's so much screaming going on, you get me? It feels like there's no place for a bass line in any of that music. <laughs> All right, for this one, it's F, A sharp, D sharp, G sharp. Absolutely beyond standard tuning. I'm gonna need some help here, F. Come on, bro, I learned the Nuno Betancourt solo. I could do this. I could do this. I mean, here we are hopping from the 10th fret to the 5th fret, then to the 8th fret, and to the 3rd. And then you go to the 3rd, and then you go to the 1. It's fucking crazy. Nope. 100% speed, bring it to me. That was it. For as messy as some metal songs sound, there's an equal amount of precision. You know, it sounds like a bunch of notes, I'm sure, to some of you. To me, it, there's a rhythm and there's a time, you know? And there's certainly a melody going on. It's one of the craziest things I've ever learned. Polyphia's lead bassist, Clay Gober, sometimes wears shirts that are a couple sizes too small, but we're not going to discriminate here. <laughs> Yeah, so Clay here is the most sacrilegious bass player I know. He's got five strings on his bass. At that point, why don't you just play a guitar? And then he's also using a bass pick. And although Clay is great at looking good in women's clothing, he's also great at blending bass picks with finger picks. We'll be using the bass pick on the top strings, and then we'll fill that in with what I like to call the claw grip, so. Say for example, we're on the fifth fret of the low E string. So we'll hit that with the bass pick, right? Following that, we have our middle finger and our ring finger kind of doing this claw motion. So fifth fret, low E string, then we hit the seventh fret of the A string with our middle finger. And then we do three mutes, three ghost notes. One with the pick on the low E string, 
followed by two ghost notes using your middle finger and your ring finger. It feels like a claw to me. The infamous wolf man of guitars, the baritone, half bass, half six string guitar. I'm just gonna be real with you, I haven't played this guitar in ages. Surprise, surprise, my inspiration for buying this baritone came from Stevie Ray Vaughan. There's a specific clip out there of Stevie playing with Carlos Santana of Santana. He's absolutely shredding that double-necked baritone guitar. And then he even plays the maracas, or some kind of shaker at the end of the song. So, you know, a little fun moment. That song is called Cold Train. But anyways, bro, I'm getting off track. Goes the resale value. I'll never forgive myself. Other than that horrific scratch I just induced right now, this guitar has remained in pretty great condition. A pretty standard 22 frets on this thing, but the trick is, the neck is about 10% larger than what you get on a typical electric guitar. When I stack this guitar up next to my Stratocaster, it, it looks like a freaking David and Goliath situation. Baritone guitar or not, there's only one way I go about these modern tuners. String her through like this, then gently pull her back one fret, just like that, and then kink. Ooh, that's not for the faint of heart, dude. So, how low is the tuning on a baritone compared to a standard electric guitar? Well, I'll demonstrate. sharp D. Yes. This right here is the Gretsch G5260. Some versions of these come with a whammy bar, which would be awesome, but they also cost a couple hundred dollars more. There's a lot more you can do with a baritone than just metal music. <laughs> Charlie is a very versatile musician, but on his social media pages, he loves to flex that funky fusion using his baritone guitar. The great thing about baritones is they can get that low end that a bass has, but you have that added benefit of like a high B and E string, so you can get up high like a, a Stratocaster. It ain't easy. Now part of me wants to sell this baritone. After I scratch the headstock, I don't think that's gonna be uh, possible, but deep down, I really don't wanna do that. It's a perfect way to kinda de-stress, like screw the theory, screw everything else, and just tune down as low as possible and let loose. Like that's what this guitar is great at. But if you really wanna hear how this instrument should sound, you should check out Charlie Hunter on Instagram because that man grinds this baritone guitar. Well, not this baritone, but you know what I mean.